In this half of the 8.3 lesson, you're going to learn how to solve for an angle instead of a side using sine, cosine, and tangent. Copy these down on your notes. So uh, one word you're going to see more and more this semester and next year uh, when we're talking about functions is inverse. In normal conversation, inverse is uh, kind of a synonym for opposite. In math, inverse refers to the opposite of a function. It cancels out the original function. You actually already use inverse functions quite a bit to solve problems without realizing it. So adding and subtracting are inverse functions. They're exact opposites that cancel each other out. That's why when you have something like x plus 3 equals 10, to cancel out the plus 3, you do the inverse. You minus 3 on both sides of the equation. Or if you have x squared equals 25, to cancel out the square, you do the inverse of squaring, square rooting. Square rooting is the opposite of squaring. It's the inverse. It cancels out squares. So you already use inverse functions all the time to cancel things out. Sine, cosine, and tangent also have inverses. The inverse of sine, the shorthand for it, is sine with a little negative one superscript. It's not really a power of negative one. This is just shorthand for opposite of sine. It's not actually sine to like a negative one power. So make sure you understand that it's not a power. It's just shorthand for opposite of sine, inverse of sine. Now, you know how if you have an x squared equals 25 sort of problem um, and you square root it, square root of 25 is asking what number was squared to get the answer of 25. It's like working backwards in the squaring problem. Inverse sine is working backwards in the sine problem. If it's saying whatever is in the inverse sine, that's the answer, and it works backward, what angle gets you this answer when you do sine? Now, copy down these three steps for solving for an angle using uh, inverse sine, cosine, and tangent. Notice how the first two out of the three steps are exactly the same as what you did last time when solving for a side. Just like before, you start by labeling the sides with A for adjacent, O for opposite, and H for hypotenuse. And then based off of your side combinations, you figure out if it's a case of knowing enough for sine, cosine, or tangent. That helps you make your equation. The only step that's different is step three, using the inverse function to find the angle. In the first example, I'll show you how to use inverse sine, cosine, and tangent on your calculator. All right, go ahead and in the example to the right of your notes, label your sides. Which side is the hypotenuse? Oh, and, and really quick, with I forgot to mention your starting angle in this case is the angle with the variable in it. So why is your starting angle? So if you label the sides you have in your example here, we have a hypotenuse side and we have an adjacent side. There's no number or variable at all on the opposite side. Now if we have an A and an H, if we think in terms of so ka toa, would this be a sine, cosine, or tangent problem? If you said because we have an A and H, it's like the ka in Sokotoa, so it's a cosine problem, well done. Cosine equals A over H, adjacent over hypotenuse. So we start off by making our equation just like before, but notice how this time the variable is the angle. So it gets plugged in where the angle is in the parentheses after the cosine. Now to get Y by itself, we have to cancel out the cosine. The only way to cancel out a cosine is to do its opposite, inverse cosine. So copy your equation a second time, but with more space, so that you can inverse cosine both sides of your equation. Now whatever you do to one side of an equation, you must do to the other. So when we inverse cosine the left to cancel out the cosine, we have to inverse cosine the right. So we've got that y equals inverse cosine of 33 over 55. Here's how you type that in a calculator. If you have the ti30x, which uh, most of you do, to get a cosine negative one symbol, to get an inverse cosine symbol, you would hit second, then cosine. On some of your calculators, the second button might be called shift. It means the same thing, shift and then cosine. 
because that will print that will type the small print label above the button. Uh, so you, once you have cosine negative one on your screen, then you could type 33 divided by 55, since uh, fraction bars really just mean dividing, and then press enter. If you typed it correctly, you should get 53.13 degrees. It's an angle, so don't forget the degree symbol. Let's try question number one. So label your starting angle. And then the two sides you know, 11 and 23, decide uh, whether they're H, O, or A. If you have an own H, is that so, ka, or toa? It's a sine problem when you have an opposite in hypotenuse. Sine equals opposite over hypotenuse. And then to cancel out the sine and get x by itself, we inverse sine both sides of the equation. So copy your equation a second time and then inverse sine both sides. So if x equals inverse sine 11 of 11 divided by 23, you should get about 28.57 degrees. Question two, x is your starting angle. Label your H, O, and A. Is it so, ka, or toa? If you said it was a toa problem, tangent equals opposite over adjacent, well done. Now, uh, really quick, I tend to uh, show my work actually with a little bit less writing than I did with the example number one. That was so you could see why it works. I just go from my original tangent equation and I tend to just jump straight to saying x equals inverse tan of 47 over 25. And then I write my final answer. What do you get for your final answer? About 61.99 degrees. Question three, what is the measure of angle y to the nearest degree? So we'll, we will round our answer to the closest whole number degree in a moment. Uh, notice how there's no variable labeled in the picture, but the intro tells you what your starting angle is. They're asking about angle y. Go ahead and solve for angle y. So you got about 67.7 and they say around to the nearest degree, so about 68 degrees. Question four, what is the measure of angle T to the nearest degree? So this time angle T is your starting angle. Solve part A. You should get around 33 degrees. Solve part B. You should get around 37 degrees. Now, the last thing we're going to talk about in your notes is exactly how your calculator does the math. Here's the deal. Have you ever wondered why, when you're doing the, the last lesson, you could type something like sine of 37 in your calculator and it would tell you exactly what the answer was without looking at the triangle you're looking at? Your calculator cannot see the sides of the triangle and make the sine fraction. They can't see that, for example, maybe the opposite side is three and hypotenuse is five. But somehow it figures out that the answer is 0.6 anyway. How does it do that? Uh, this is a quick visual uh, that helps explain why. Here we have three triangles, three right triangles that all have a 37 degree corner. So if we're doing the math visually to figure out what sine of the 37 degree corner is for each triangle, we would do opposite over hypotenuse. 6 over 10 for this one. Opposite over hypotenuse would be 3 out over 5 for the second one. And opposite over hypotenuse would be 1.5 over 2.5 for the third one. Notice how all three get the same answer, even though they're different sized triangles. The reason why all three triangles get the same answer for sine of 37 is this. If you look at all three triangles, they have two pairs of matching angles in common. 
the 37 degree and the right angle matches on each one. And that should sound kind of familiar, that two angle matching pattern on different sized triangles, because that should remind you of chapter seven, the similarity chapter. Remember that AA similarity postulate? The AA similarity postulate tells you that all these triangles are similar to each other. They're same shape, just different sizes. So write this down. All right triangles with a 37 degree corner are similar to each other because of AA similarity postulate. Therefore, all the sides have the matching proportions. That's why uh, the, the 6 over 10 got the same answer as the 3 over 5 and the 1.5 over 2.5. They're the same shape triangles, so they have proportional sides. Add one last note. So the similarity of the triangles is why ratios like sine or cosine or tangent, because they're comparing sides in a triangle, always get the same answer based off of just the starting angle. The starting angle is enough for, I, but like the calculator doesn't need to see your 37 degree corner triangle. It just has to imagine a 37 degree corner triangle because it'll get the same answer no matter what.